Good morning. Welcome to Washington National Cathedral. My name is Randy Hollerith. I'm the Dean of the Cathedral. And on behalf of Mary Ann Buddy, the Bishop of the Diocese of Washington, it's a joy to have all of you here with us. How many of you are visiting the Cathedral today? Raise your hand if you're visiting. Welcome to you all. Welcome. This Cathedral is a house of prayer for all people. And whatever has brought you here, wherever you come from, you are always welcome. And we hope if you're visiting that you will come back, come back and see us often. Several announcements for you this morning. We are very blessed to have as our guest preacher, the very Reverend Dr. Robert Willis, a Dean Emeritus of Canterbury Cathedral, and his beloved partner, Fletcher. Fletcher, stand up. We're going to get Fletcher some attention and welcome them here to the cathedral. <laughs> Dean Robert and Fletcher are beloved friends of this cathedral and have been for many, many years, and it's wonderful to have them on this side of the pond. Several other announcements for you. We have a guest choir with us today. We're very fortunate to have Highland Park United Methodist Church Choir from Dallas, Texas is here with us today. Thank you all. They are under the leadership of Carrie Kuman, and Scott Detra is a guest organist we have with us this morning, who used to at one time was one of the organists and associate director of music here at the cathedral. So it's great to have Scott back amongst us as well. Yeah. <laughs> so um, as part of our Pride weekend activities, please know that St. Joseph's Chapel will be open following the service. Uh, Matthew Shepard is interred in St. Joseph's Chapel downstairs, and the cathedral's portrait of Matthew Shepard will be on display following the service. So I hope you're in welcome and invited to go down there. And then next Sunday, uh, we will be doing, uh, we'll have a wonderful preacher, Raphael Warnock, who is senator from Georgia, and also the senior pastor at Ebenezer Baptist Church will be our guest preacher next Sunday for Juneteenth holiday. And we will be having a forum following the service with our CBS host, Michelle Miller, our very own Dr. Motley, the Reverend Keith Bird, and our canon for mission, Leonard Hamlin, will be having a forum directly following the service. So if you're around, I hope you will join us for that. Now I invite you to take a deep breath with me. Let it out slowly. Let us calm ourselves and center ourselves and open ourselves to the power of the Holy Spirit. Thank you.
Blessed be God, most holy, glorious, and undivided Trinity. Praying together, Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. O God, from whom all good proceeds, grant that by your inspiration we may think those things that are right, and by your merciful guiding may do them. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Holy God, who breathes life into each one of us and all of creation, we pray for the human family, giving thanks for the diversity of your creation. Help us to embrace people of all orientations, gender identities, and expressions as your children in love, compassion, and celebration. That guided by your Holy Spirit, we may live together in your peace. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. A reading from the prophet Hosea. Thus says the Lord, I will return again to my place until they acknowledge their guilt and seek my face. In their distress, they will beg my favor. Come, let us return to the Lord, for it is he who has torn and he will heal us. He has struck down and he will bind us up. After two days, he will revive us. On the third day, he will raise us up that we may live before him. 
Let us know, let us press on to know the Lord. His appearing is as sure as the dawn. He will come to us like the showers, like the spring rains that water the earth. What shall I do with you, O Ephraim? What shall I do with you, O Judah? Your love is like a morning cloud, like the dew that goes away early. Therefore, I have hewn them by the prophets. I have killed them by the words of my mouth, and my judgment goes forth as the light. For I desire steadfast love and not sacrifice, the knowledge of God rather than burnt offerings. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. A lesson from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. The promise that he would inherit the world did not come to Abraham or to his descendants through the law, but through the righteousness of faith. If it is the adherents of the law who are to be the heirs, faith is null and the promise is void. For the law brings wrath, but where there is no law, neither is there violation. For this reason, it depends on faith, in order that the promise may rest on grace and be guaranteed to all his descendants, not only to the adherents of the law, but also to those who share the faith of Abraham. For he is the father of all of us. As it is written, I have made you the father of many nations, in the presence of the God in whom he believed, who gives life to the dead and calls into existence the things that do not exist. Hoping against hope, he believed that he would become the father of many nations, according to what was said, so numerous shall your descendants be. He did not weaken in faith when he considered his own body, which was already as good as dead, for he was about a hundred years old, or when he considers the barrenness of Sarah's womb. No distrust made him waver concerning the promise of God, but he grew strong in his faith as he gave glory to God, being fully convinced that God was able to do what he had promised. Therefore, his faith was reckoned to him as righteousness. Now the words, it was reckoned to him, were written not for his sake alone, but for ours also. It will be reckoned to us who believe in him who raised Jesus our Lord from the dead, who was handed over to death for our trespasses and was raised for our justification. The word of the Lord.
Santo Evangelio de nuestro Señor Jesucristo según Mateo Jesús se fue de allí y vio a un hombre llamado Mateo Que estaba sentado en el lugar donde cobraba los impuestos para Roma Jesús le dijo, sígueme Entonces Mateo se levantó y lo siguió Sucedió que, que Jesús estaba comiendo en la casa y muchos de los que cobraban impuestos para Roma y otra gente de mala fama llegaron y se sentaron también a la mesa junto con Jesús y sus discípulos. Al ver esto, los fariseos preguntaron a los discípulos, ¿cómo es que su maestro come con cobradores de impuestos y pecadores? Jesús lo oyó y les dijo, los que están buenos y sanos no necesitan médico, sino los enfermos. Vayan y aprendan el significado de estas palabras. Lo que quiero es que sean compasivos y no que ofrezcan sacrificios. Pues yo no he venido a llamar a los justos, sino a los pecadores. Mientras Jesús les, habl les estaba hablando, un jefe de los judíos llegó se arrodilló ante él y le dijo, Mi hija acaba de morir, pero si tú vienes y pones tu mano sobre ella, volverá a la vida. Jesús se levantó y acompañado de sus discípulos se fue con él. Entonces una mujer que desde hacía doce años estaba enferma, con derrames de sangre, se acercó a Jesús por detrás y le tocó el borde de la capa, porque pensaba, Tan solo con que llegue a tocar su capa quedaré sana. Pero Jesús se dio la vuelta, vio a la mujer y le dijo, Ánimo, hija, por tu fe has sido sanada. Y desde aquel mismo momento quedó sana. Cuando Jesús llegó a casa del jefe de los judíos y vio que los músicos estaban preparados ya para el entierro y que la gente lloraba a gritos, les dijo, Sálganse de aquí, pues la muchacha no está muerta, sino dormida. La gente se rió de Jesús, pero Él los hizo salir. Luego entró y tomó de la mano a la muchacha, y ella se levantó. Y por toda aquella región corrió la noticia de lo que había pasado. As Jesus was walking along, he saw a man called Matthew sitting at the tax booth, and he said to him, follow me. And he got up and followed him. And as he sat at dinner in the house, many tax collectors and sinners came and were sitting with him and his disciples. When the Pharisees saw this, they said to his disciples, why does your teacher eat with tax collectors and sinners? But when he heard this, he said, Those who are well have no need of a physician, but those who are sick. Go and learn what this means. I desire mercy, not sacrifice, for I have come to call not the righteous, but sinners. While he was saying these things to them, suddenly a leader of the synagogue came in and knelt before him, saying, My daughter has just died, but come and lay your hand on her, and she will live. And Jesus got up and followed him with his disciples. Then suddenly a woman who had been suffering from hemorrhages for 12 years came up behind him and touched the fringe of his cloak, for she said to herself, if I only touch his cloak, I will be made well. Jesus turned and seeing her, he said, take heart, daughter, your faith has made you well. And instantly the woman was made well. When Jesus came to the leader's house and saw the flute players and the crowd making a commotion, he said, Go away, for the girl is not dead but sleeping. And they laughed at him. But when the crowd had been put outside, he went in and took her by the hand, and the girl got up. And the report of this spread throughout the district. The Gospel of the Lord.
In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. I can't begin to put into words what pleasure it is to come to this holy place again after the long gap enforced by lockdown and for pleasure for pleasure and for for me it's it is a tremendous pleasure to be the guests of Dean Randy and Melissa again uh, and all of you as well but perhaps I could also welcome so many of you online many of you part of our worldwide garden congregation who were part of that happy accident engendered by Fletcher who when the Archbishop closed churches said well we can't let this stop in in England after 1400 years go into the garden and I'll bring a camera and uh, maybe one or two of our congregation will will um, like to join in with with what we're doing and it could be we don't know how long it will last that began a, a, a journey of 26 months and without missing a day I want to pay tribute to Fletcher because in that time he learned to be a cameraman and learned to be a set designer and learned all sorts of ways of goading me to be much more brave in everything I was doing and he wouldn't let that go but that's what that kind of partnership is all about and the gratitude one feels for the person who can do it for you is immense so I would pay tribute to him this morning for that huge learning curve. And to those of you who are just going back to watch the 26 months all over again, day by day, um, we say again, we hope one day we can do some more when we've reached a, a, a stabilitas somewhere. One of the things that Fletcher was always insistent upon was that I take notice of beautiful things in the garden or in the world. And, so many times I've been shouted at saying, come and stand here at the great Georgian windows of the Deanery Library. And we were looking at a black sky, but in the middle of that black sky, the most beautiful rainbow. We can't see it here, he'd say. Let's go up onto the roof. Oh, do we have, let's go onto the roof and so on and so forth. And when we got there, of course, that enormous sight was made known to us the rainbow against the black sky. So that I think both of us feel it very moving to be here on Pride Sunday and watch the colors of the rainbow come up, leading the procession this morning. We used to learn them with the menom menomic, or I, I can't say the word, roigbiv. That's red, orange, yellow, green, blue, indigo, violet, to make the seven colors of the rainbow. But in the scriptures, the rainbow, of course, is the most important symbol. Twice, when people have visions of the throne of God, the exiled prophet Ezekiel and the, the exiled John on the island of Patmos in the book of Revelation, when their eyes focus on the throne of God in all its brightness with myriads of angels there in the middle over the throne of God is the rainbow and the rainbow is God's promise to the earth I use the term earth advisedly because the promise is to not just to humanity but everything in all its diversity which this earth contains and that covenant is there in the sky every time we see that beautiful rainbow. God has made a covenant to protect and care for the earth. Humanity has never responded, but can do so individually, day by day, by the activity with one another, and making sure that our promise to God is as sure as his promise to us. Sometimes it's very difficult to be yourself. And that rainbow banner coming up the aisle spoke of what it costs sometimes too. One thinks of the young life of Matthew Shepherd and the witness 
that that life now gives in the chapel of St. Joseph here, happily in the crypt of this wonderful place of refuge and sanctuary for so many. And I hope some of you will feel moved to go down and, and give thanks for a life like Matthew, which ended in terrible torture, as though the, a body and life had been thrown away in desperate circumstances. But now, see, he's part of that rainbow. St. Catherine of Siena said, be who God meant you to be, and you will set the world on fire. Well, sometimes it's very difficult to be who God meant you to be. And you need those closest to you to say, look, this isn't you. This isn't you. And you realize deep inside you that it isn't. Just be brave. And you realize then that with the help of those who are helping you in that way, you can be brave. We don't know what was happening on that night for the hours that Matthew hung there, but his sacrifice, shall we say, was certainly not in vain. Be who God meant you to be, and you will set the world on fire. There's a children's story that at the end of the rainbow, if you can find it, there is a crock of gold, and if one takes the rainbow in its, in its uh, um, what should we say, its parable state in the, in the scriptures, then it's all too true. For when God, by his light, shows you the particularity of every human being and the particularity of you, yourself, or me, myself, then you realize that this is something that can be an answer to God's covenant. I have to say it takes both rain and sunshine to make a rainbow. It's not just all sunshine. It's black clouds and then the dimension of all God's definite different colors representing his earth and our humanity. It's a lovely gospel that we've had read this morning, but it's actually a really, really powerful one if you dig into it, because Jesus is breaking all kinds of laws and rules, and first of all, he is going into the bedroom of um, someone who has died and holding the hand of someone they had thought was dead. Unclean, that made him, in the Jewish law at that time. It meant nothing to him. He had come here to bring a deeper cleansing and a deeper life to all of us so that we could do the same for each other in so many different ways and learn how to do it. Or, once again, the woman coming up to touch him. She had an issue of blood, unclean, that would make him. He threw those laws to the winds and in seeing who touched him, he said, my daughter, go in peace. Your faith has made you well. Not the money you paid to the doctors, perhaps not even touching Jesus physically. The faith that she had in him and God's promises had made her well. So as one goes to the chapel of St. Joseph, where the memorial to Matthew is, one remembers perhaps another Joseph, for this, modern translations make me annoyed about coats with long sleeves. For Joseph in the Septuagint, the Greek uh, translation of the old Bible, which the Christians in, in Jesus' time would have used, it talks about a coat of many colors. And because of that coat of many colors, the diversity of, of Joseph's ability to, to, to give uh, representation to the dreams and visions that he had, his brothers grew envious and spiteful, and then violent, and then murderous. It's strange how the very best qualities evoked in humanity and the best creative activity can, in return, get a response of spiteful jealousy. And Joseph they throw into a pit 
and leave him for dead and then decide to sell him to Midianite traders and send him into Egypt. But God was working through Joseph. God's promises were being fulfilled through that coat of many colors which had been ripped off him and covered in sheep's blood and taken to his father to make the father think that he had been killed. All that evil was transformed into good. It takes both rain and black clouds and sunshine to make a rainbow. This day is a day when we celebrate diversity, but we celebrate too the encouragement that we are able to give to one another to be ourselves. And it's June the 11th, which in the Christian calendar is St. Barnabas Day, Joseph Barnabas, one of the people in our calendar who gets apostolic status but was not an apostle. He was one of the first called to be a messenger of the gospel, but he is called also the son of encouragement. What a title. Would that we could all be sons and daughters and human beings giving encouragement. What encouragement did he give? When everyone else was frightened to death of Saul and casting him out as something evil and not to be allowed into the context of the Holy Church, Barnabas stretched forth his right hand and took Paul by the right hand and introduced him to the others as one who is now going to be a messenger of God's purpose and promises. And they work together. Well, we can read the story as Luke sets it down. But Joseph Barnabas hadn't ended there. For they had taken with him on the first missionary journey, Mark, John Mark, Barnabas's nephew. And he'd grown afraid and gone back quite quickly. And when the second time came that Barnabas and Paul were going on a journey, Barnabas said, okay, let's give Mark a second chance. And Paul said, absolutely not. I'm not taking anyone with me that's failed me before. And we're told, this never happens in the church, the dispute was so sharp that they parted company. And Barnabas took Mark with him to Cyprus, which was home ground to let Mark just develop. Thank goodness, for we were blessed by Mark as well as Barnabas. How many stories we could tell about that? People giving encouragement to those who had been cast out before or were trying to be themselves and couldn't quite make it. And so bravely, someone stepped forward and said, but that's not you. This isn't how you are. And suddenly, the veil drops from your own eyes and you realize that you have to step up to the mark and be brave. Well, here we are with the rainbow colors of Pride Sunday all around us, giving thanks for the promise of God, the covenant he's made to his earth, and the invitation to respond to that promise as a human race and care for the planet, and as individual Christians and care for one another, and never vilify someone for what they are for they may be agents of God's purpose, not only to his world, but to you. And you may not realize it for years and years after. So I would want to say from this pulpit, this beautiful Canterbury pulpit, on Pride Sunday and St. Barnabas Day, I believe in rainbows, and I also believe in the promises of God. Amen. Let us affirm our faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. 
We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshiped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Eternal God, you call us to serve you with body, mind, and spirit through loving your creation and our sisters, brothers, and siblings. Open our hearts in compassion and receive our petitions on behalf of the needs of the church, the world, and all in need. For the church, that it may boldly stand against evil and oppression, may it never grow weary of proclaiming the gospel of Christ to a broken world in need of healing. Lord, in your mercy, for the good earth which God has given to us, make us good stewards to use the resources of creation wisely, generously, and respectfully for the sake of generations to come. Lord, in your mercy. For the nations and peoples of the world, place into the hearts of all leaders the will and passion to seek peace in places of war and conflict, especially in Ukraine. Pour out your spirit upon Joseph, President of the United States, the Supreme Court, and all in positions of public trust, that they may serve justice and promote the dignity and freedom of every person. In the cathedral's weekly observance of prayers for the states and territories, we hold before you the people and government of Arizona. Lord, in your mercy. For the human family, giving thanks for the vast diversity of your creation. Guide us to embrace and uplift people of all sexual orientations, gender identities and expressions, that we may live together in your peace. We pray that the walls that separate us will be broken down so we may be united in bonds of love. Lord, in your mercy. For all who ache for a better tomorrow, Stand with those who give their lives to dismantle the injustices of racism and poverty and all forms of inequality and oppression in our nation. Open the hearts of all people of this land that we may recognize one another's humanity. Lord, in your mercy. For all who suffer in body, mind, spirit, or relationship, we pray especially for victims and survivors of trauma from gun violence. Grant your compassion to those with chronic illnesses and COVID, the unemployed and underemployed, those needing homes, the isolated and the forgotten, that surrounded by your love, they may be comforted in their distress. Lord, in your mercy, in the assurance of resurrection hope, we remember before you all who have died, especially those who have lost their lives to gun violence, racial injustice, or any form of hatred. Bring us with them to dwell in your presence.
forever. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our o God of mercy, whom no image can encompass, no definition capture, receive our hopes and prayers that we may rejoice in the abundance of your grace and love. Amen. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. God of all mercy, we confess that we have sinned against you, opposing your will in our lives. We have denied your goodness in each other, in ourselves, and in the world you have created. We repent of the evil that enslaves us, the evil we have done, and the evil done on our behalf. Forgive, restore, and strengthen us through our Savior Jesus Christ, that we may abide in your love and serve only your will. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you. Forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. The peace of Christ be always with you. Please be seated. Once again, welcome to all of you. Thank you for being here with us today, and especially all of our friends who join us online from around the world. We're glad that you're tuning in with us this morning, and we hope that you are safe and sound and well wherever you are. We move now into the Lord's Supper, Holy Communion, the Eucharist, and please know that everyone is invited to receive communion today. It doesn't matter whether you're a part of a church or your denomination. If you desire to know our Lord Jesus, then we hope you will come forward and be fed at Christ's table. Um, the ushers will show you where to go at the appropriate time. Um, you will be offered both bread and wine. When the bread comes around, put your hand out flat and a member of the clergy will put the bread in your hand. And then you can eat the bread and take a sip from the chalice, or if you prefer, you may just take bread alone, if that is your preference. We also have gluten-free bread if you need it, so just, just ask for it. If you'd rather not receive communion, you're welcome to stay in your seats, but I hope you'll come forward when others come forward and just cross your arms over your chest like this. That way we know you'd rather not receive communion, and we can offer you a prayer and a blessing. Finally, if you're able to support the cathedral in our work, we would be most grateful. We will be passing the plate around this morning, but we also have entered the 21st century, and on the back of your bulletin, you will find a QR code if you would rather give digitally in support of the life of the cathedral. So many people think that we are supported by the federal government or by the, uh, by the larger Episcopal Church. We, we are not. Um, all of the money for the mission, the ministry, everything we do here comes from good folks just like you, from private donation. So if you can help us in our ministry, we would be most grateful. Walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us, an offering and a sacrifice to God.
The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give God thanks and praise. It is truly right and good and joyful to give you thanks, O holy God, source of life and fountain of mercy. You have filled us and all creation with your blessing and fed us with your constant love. You have redeemed us in Jesus Christ and knit us into one body. Through your spirit, you replenish us and call us to fullness of life. Therefore, joining with angels and archangels and with the faithful of every generation, we lift our voices with all creation as we sing. Blessed are you, gracious God, creator of the universe and giver of life. You formed us in your own image and called us to dwell in your infinite love. You gave the world into our care that we might be your faithful stewards and show forth your bountiful grace. But we failed to honor your image in one another and in ourselves. We would not see your goodness in the world around us, and so we violated your creation, abused one another, and rejected your love. Yet you never ceased to care for us and prepared the way of salvation for all people. Through Abraham and Sarah, you called us into covenant with you. You delivered us from slavery, sustained us in the wilderness, and raised up prophets to renew your promise of salvation. Then, in the fullness of time, you sent your eternal word made mortal flesh in Jesus. Born into the human family and dwelling among us, he revealed your glory. Giving himself freely to death on the cross, he triumphed over evil, opening the way of freedom and life. On the night before he died for us, our Savior Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his friends and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. As supper was ending, Jesus took the cup of wine. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant which is poured out for you and for all, for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Remembering his death and resurrection, we now present to you from your creation this bread and this wine. By your Holy Spirit, may they be for us the body and blood of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Grant that we who share these gifts may be filled with the Holy Spirit and live as Christ's body in the world. Bring us into the everlasting heritage of your daughters and sons, that with our patrons, the apostles Peter and Paul, and all your saints, past, present, and yet to come, we may praise your name forever. Through Christ and with Christ and in Christ, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, to you be honor, glory, and praise forever and ever.
And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The gifts of God for the people of God.
praying together. Loving God, we give you thanks for restoring us in your image and nourishing us with spiritual food in the sacrament of Christ's body and blood. Now send us forth a people forgiven, healed, renewed, that we may proclaim your love to the world and continue in the risen life of Christ our Savior. Amen. The peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and your minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen.
Let us go forth in the name of Christ. Thanks be to God.